seven. Yes, sir. It is you, Junior. Don't call me that, please. Well, what are you doing here? Dinner. What do you think? Dr. Jones. Yes? yes. You must die! No! Dad, it was a lonely way to grow up for you too. If you'd been an ordinary average father like the other guys' dads, you'd have understood that. Actually, I was a wonderful father. Wonderful. Did I ever tell you to eat up, go to bed, wash your ears, do your homework? No, I respected your privacy and I taught you self-reliance. What you taught me was that I was less important to you than people who'd been dead for 500 years in another country. And I learned it so well that we've hardly spoken for 20 years. You left just when you were becoming interesting. Dad, I don't know. Huh, I'm here now. What do you want to talk about? Hmm? <laughs> I can't think of anything. Then what are you complaining about? We have work to do. We're hearing a lot of very odd things about this story, sir. Shooting star hit Kyle. Yeah. Do you think they come from Mars? Uh, what do you think, Dr. Forrester? Oh, it's possible, at least it seems certain, they're from some planet other than our own. Uh, suppose they are Martians, Professor. What would they look like? Uh, bigger than us? Uh, smaller? Well, as to Martians, our gravitational pull would weigh them down. Our heavier air would oppress them. Uh, then you think they'd be breathing creatures like us. Uh, what about the heart and blood and all that? But if they are Martians, and if they do have hearts, they'd almost certainly beat at a slower rate. Their veins might be distended. Their senses could be quite different from ours, of course. They may, for instance, be able to smell colors. Precedent in our own evolution makes it possible that they have more than one brain. You mean two, three? <laughs> Just think of that, folks. It's only speculation. And now, Dr. Forrester... Those ways of using modern drainage practices, which we also see in Scott Bray on the west coast of Scotland, 
Scott Bray dates from 3100 BC and was continuously occupied for 600 years until it was apparently abandoned in 2500 BC. There's no clear evidence as to why its occupants decided to abandon a uh, perfectly uh, healthy environment. Yes. May I have a moment, Professor? Uh, yes. Um, open up Michelson. Review chapter four. When I come back, we'll discuss the difference between migration and exodus. What? I have no idea the pressure coming from the Board of Regents. The FBI showed up this morning, ransacked your office, searched all your files. You're the dean of the college. Why didn't you stop them? They have no right. They had every right. They weren't vandals. They were federal agents with search warrants. The university isn't going to get itself embroiled in that kind of controversy. Not in this charged climate. So you're firing me? A, a leave of absence is all. An indefinite leave of absence. You are fired. During me. which they've agreed to continue to pay your full salary for I a period. I don't want their money. Please don't be foolish. You don't know what I had to go through to get that for you. You went through. What exactly did you have to go through, Charlie? Henry. I resigned. Where will you go? Train to New York. Overnight to London for starts. I might end up teaching in Leipzig. Heinrich owes me a favor. I'll wire you when I get settled. You can send on the rest of my things. I suppose there's nothing to keep you here. I barely recognize this country anymore. But when the hysteria reaches academia, I guess it's time to call it a career. How did Deirdre take the news? How does any wife take such things? The look on her face was a combination of pride and panic. <laughs> I never should have doubted you, my friend. No. You have reason to question your friends these days. Brutal couple of years, huh, Charlie? We seem to have reached the age where life stops giving us things and starts taking them away. Just another half glass. <laughs> <laughs> 